welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast. I'm your host, Susie Hunter. We got Kale Sorbo producing today, my absolute favorite duo in sports. Love this for us. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of Rocky stuff to talk about. We got to talk about this Red Series. Uh, we have a great conversation that we're going to air later on in the show with Matt Carasetti about his time with the Yard Goats during that season. They played the entire season on the road. Uh, it was a great chat. Can't wait to share it with you guys. Um, we've got some baseball headlines. I'm going to give you five baseball headlines that I think you need to know. Uh, and we're going to preview the rest of this Reds series. Maybe a little bit of the rest of the week, but most importantly, most importantly, we're going to have a little fun today. Um, we're going to take some baseball and we're going to make it about Taylor Swift or vice versa. So she dropped a single today, Cruel Summer. Uh, so we're going to we're going to have a little fun with this. Kale, Kale helped me out with a little countdown. Um, not yet. I'm going to address some of the comments because it looked like James was actually <laughs> waiting in there. I didn't see these. I'm sorry. Um, James... Uh, wants to know how sick is K free. Um, we don't know. We didn't really know he was sick until Bud Black did his post game interviews. Like this was kind of news to all of us. So I'm not really sure how sick he was. He can't be that sick. Cause they interviewed him about, um, about Wyndham Clark in the clubhouse. And it looked like that was before the game. So I don't know. I don't know how sick he is. Um, but he said maybe he'll be ready for his Wednesday, for a Wednesday start. He was supposed to start today. Um, so we're going to, we're going to keep an eye on the situation for sure. I'm sure we'll know soon because we got, we got lots of media on the ground in Cincinnati with uh, news for us, but yeah, we're going to do a little, we're gonna have a little fun. We're going to do a Rockies. We're going to do a Rockies recap. Taylor's version. I'm going to see how many Taylor Swift references I can squeeze into a 90 second Rockies recap. Kale's got a countdown for me. Are you guys ready? Are you ready, Kale? Am I ready? <laughs> Are you ready for it? That one doesn't count. That's a freebie. <laughs> Let me take a deep breath. All right, let's start the countdown. All right. It is a cruel summer for the Colorado Rockies as they can't cool down the Reds hot streak. Nine wins in a row for Cincinnati, six losses in a row for the Rockies. But it's a love story between Cincy and Joey Votto because he got a great standing ovation in his first game back off the I.L. But Elias Diaz, I knew you were trouble when you walked in to the batter's box, a fourth inning home run and an RBI single in the sixth inning rally that eventually got the Rockies their only lead in the game. But Mike Moustakis, do you have bad blood with the Reds? Because he got booed when he stepped up to the plate. But listen, you do you, let them boo you, be patient, take that walk, because that is how the Rockies scored. But the Reds got their karma. Moose came in to get the lead, but his error at third caused the Rockies to lose their lead once again. And Joey Votto, you need to calm down. I'm happy you're back, but that RBI single, that two RBI single, well, that hits different. No teardrops on his guitar for Daniel Bard because he had a great seventh inning appearance, allowed just one hit, no runs, one strikeout. And are you ready for it? A ninth inning rally? Moose goes, look what you made me do. He singles, pro far singles, but the rally comes up short and we know this one all too well. But hey, that's baseball. We're going to shake it off and begin again tomorrow. <gasps> <laughs> was that exactly 90 seconds? <laughs> that <was like> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we did it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is my opus. <laughs> that was actually like really impressive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm like actually delighted by this. Uh, well, let's do a real recap of the Rockies game. So yeah, Austin Gomber on the mound for the Rockies versus Brandon Williamson. I'm going to give you Gomber's pitching line. So five and one thirds innings pitched five hits, five runs. Four of those were earned. No walks. We like that. Six strikeouts. We like that. 
three solo home runs. We don't like that. Um, but his ERA, 7.25 right now. The Reds are 38 and 35. The Reds are like not just above 500. They're like a few games above 500. Like what is happening here? Uh, and the Rockies are 29 and 46. Uh, not fun. I mentioned this in, um, you know, the Taylor's version of the recap, but... Uh, six losses in a row for the Colorado Rockies. Uh, not a fun time, that is for sure. But yeah, the first inning, Austin Gomber gives up a solo homer. Um, and he does that again in the second inning, too. But the second inning for the Rockies, they had a chance to score. They had two men on, uh, but then Coco Montes struck out to end the inning. Uh, the fourth inning is where things started to get a little fun. Uh, Elias Diaz had a solo homer, and Jorge Alfaro got his first Rockies hit. It was a double uh, right to the top of that center field wall. Uh, also, like, we finally got to see him, you know, running on the base pads. He's pretty fast, so I would like to see a little more of that. Um, the sixth inning is where things really got interesting. Randall Grichik singled, Rymac singled, Elias Diaz singled, Grichik scored on that, Alfaro doubled, Max scored, uh, Nolan Jones took a walk, Moose comes in to pinch hit, he takes a walk, the Rockies score on that, and then you could really see the difference between, you know, veteran plate discipline and uh, these rookies and their plate discipline because Moose, you know, he was so patient. He took that walk. And then we see Doyle come up and we see Coco Montes come up and they, you can just see how eager they are to try to get a hit, but that comes up short. Uh, and then in the bottom of the six, that is when the wheels came off. Joey Votto got a solo home run, which I mean, like good for him. Good for him for getting a solo home run his first game back off the IL because that man means so much to Cincinnati and also so much to baseball. He is just one of the great personalities, but he got that solo home run. He put on the uh, Viking celebration that they have, the the hat and the, the cape. Was it a cape? I think that's a cape. But anyway, I don't know what they call it, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, Joey Votto actually stepped out of the dugout to acknowledge everyone cheering for him. It was pretty fun. It was pretty fun um, for them. Not fun for us. Um, but yeah, things uh, things kind of fell apart. Uh, the Rockies had a chance to uh, do something, something in the ninth. Um, uh, Mike Moustakis had a single. Um, uh, Profar had a single. Um, but ultimately, three strikeouts uh, to end that that game. So yeah, apparently it's, I mean, yeah, it's been a while since uh, Rocky's starter has even gotten the win. Um, but yeah, buddy had a lot to say about this after the game too, you know, just said, uh, both teams played super hard. It was a really emotional game for the Rockies. They kind of clawed back, but then missed a lot of opportunities. There were some really good at bats, but definitely some inexperience showing itself. Um, you know, which we definitely noticed in the sixth inning with Coco, and Bretton Doyle. Um, but yeah, they got to get the ball in play because when they get the ball in play, good things happen. So yeah, that is the game. It was a 5-4 loss for the Rockies. Yeah, that was it. That's baseball. Um, design love, when do you honestly think the Rockies will be competitive again? That is a really good question. I mean, we've been kind of saying like, ooh, like 2025 maybe? Maybe, maybe we have like a lot of really good talent up on its way. So I like to think that it could be 2025, maybe closer to 2026 at this point. I don't think we're far away from being competitive. I just, you know, we're very much not there now. James adding when they sell the team. Hilarious. <laughs> It'll never happen. <laughs> It'll never happen. Um, let's, uh, let's shout out some of our some of our friends, some of our sponsors. We got to talk about Bacchus and Shanker. Because when you get hurt by someone other than the Colorado Rockies, Bacchus and Shanker is here to help because Bacchus and Shanker wins for Colorado families. They're helping those who are seriously injured in Colorado for more than 25 years. And it's totally free until they win money in your case. No upfront fee to speak with anyone about your case. No fee while they work on it. There is no fee until they win you money in your case. And they've done it a lot because Bacchus and Shanker has won more than a billion dollars for their clients. And they've got 
locations all over Colorado so you can talk to them in person and get that help you need from them in person. They've got offices in Denver, Aurora, Englewood, and Fort Collins. And listen, Bacchus and Shanker has the strength and power to win your case. More than 30 lawyers, more than 100 staff. The bottom line, Bacchus and Shanker helps you with all kinds of injury cases where you weren't at fault. Car accidents, motorcycles, rideshare, pedestrians, trucks. They can even help you if you're injured at work. So call them at 222-2222. All too low is very appropriate considering he is a person who gets hurt at work. I can't believe we've never made that connection. Um, but yeah, 222-2222. Find out if you have a case for free because Bacchus and Shanker wins. Um, and you could be winning once a week, a few times a week at Volo Sports. They have the largest social sports. Uh, they are the largest social sports company in the U.S. They have such a great presence here in Denver. And we see it all the time because the Volo, the Volo players come into the DNVR bar and have a really great time after all of their games. Uh, but they do it so the kids can play free. The Volo Kids Foundation is a separate 501c3 that provides free sports camps to kids in each Volo city. Denver might be like the best Volo city because it seems like a lot of people are in on the action, especially especially the DNVR crew. Uh, they've been playing in the Cherry Creek Bowling League on Mondays. Um, so if you want to join them, you can, you can join them. If you don't have a team, you can sign up as a free agent. Um, uh, and you, they have a Volo Pass where it's a monthly membership program that gives you unlimited access to sports events and social activities every single night. Uh, unlimited pickups, drop-ins, and tournaments. And it's only $20 a month to play games with some cool new people, be active, make friends, come get some drinks afterwards. But yeah, they've got leagues throughout the city, including Lodo, Rhino, Uptown, City Park, Highlands, Sloan's Lake, Cherry Creek, DU, Englewood, Arvada, Aurora, Northfield, uh, and more. So uh, if you've missed your chance at the May Leagues, you can get your Volo Pass now and start playing in leagues as a free agent today. Make sure you use code DNVR10 for $10 off at www.volosports.com slash Denver. All right. Oh, we got some comments too. Um, James, if you're a former Rockies player, you just got roasted by the Susie Hunter called Bacchus and Shanker. Oh my gosh. Don't show too low the show. <laughs> Don't show him. <laughs> All right. We got some Rockies news to get into. Kyle Freeland. We found out Kyle Freeland is sick. He, Bud Black just casually mentioned it when he was asked about pitching because uh, we didn't know who was starting on Wednesday. Guess what? We still don't know who's starting on Wednesday, but we do know that Noah Davis is starting today on Tuesday. Uh, Noah Davis hasn't started for the Rockies since April due to that elbow inflammation. He was one of those five starters we lost in a period of three weeks. Uh, so this will be his four fourth start. His first two starts were good. So I uh, hopefully this, this one is good. I think we need it. I would love to see the Rockies tame the reds a little bit they're on a really hot run right now but yeah all we know is now Noah Davis will start today we were thinking about him as a potential starter for Wednesday hopefully Kyle Freeland is better for Wednesday and can make that start but if not I, I don't know who would start they I don't know who they would bring up it's a it's just a bad situation you guys um Oh, we got some comments in here, and I promise I will get to these in a minute. Uh, Connor Kaiser. Connor Kaiser was called up uh, when Tovar went on the paternity list. Paternity list. We found this out right as our show ended yesterday, um, but his parents made it to Great American Ballpark. They chatted with Jenny Kavnar on AT&T Sportsnet, um, but they seem delightful. They're a baseball family, too, which we love a baseball family. Um, and actually it was so funny. They were really excited to see Mike Moustakis because they are Royals fans. They, uh, they're a family of Royals fans. Connor Kaiser grew up a Royals fan, so he gets to be a teammate with Mike Moustakis, but also his parents were super stoked to see him. So I thought that was adorable, but yeah, he got the call on Saturday night. Um, uh, and his parents actually had noticed that he wasn't in the game. So they were kind of concerned, but then when they found out he was getting called up, they could relax. Um, but yeah, he's the youngest of three. 
Fun fact, uh, he's been hitting baseball since he could walk, and his dad played college baseball, so I thought that was adorable. Um, Kyle Freeland congratulated Wyndham Clark on winning that PGA thing. The, what is it called? The U.S. Open. It's the U.S. Open. Oh, yes. my gosh. I couldn't think of it. I have Taylor Swift on the mind. <laughs> also, fun fact, I went to high school with Wyndham Clark. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> Um, uh, you went to high school with a lot of people. You didn't. You also like you overlapped at school with Connor Siebold. No, not uh, Christian McCaffrey. Oh, it was Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. But did Connor Siebold go to your school? I probably. Okay. I went to Valor Christian for a year, which is where like all the athletes from Colorado go. Right. So, yeah. Not Kyle Freeland. Not Kyle Freeland. Not Kyle Freeland. Where did he go to high Thomas school? Thomas Jefferson. Oh, he was a TJ. He's a oh. TJ guy. Love that. Hopefully, that's the only TJ guy he ever is. <sighs> Ooh. Don't even put that out in the universe. Why would I Seuss? say that? Oh my god! If anything, if anything happens to Kyle Freeland, I'm a dead woman. <laughs> dead woman talking. <laughs> um. Uh, so George Frazier, we're gonna. This is a, on a serious note. George Frazier, former broadcaster for the Rockies, uh, great friend to uh, all of our broadcasting friends, passed away yesterday. Um. So, yeah, the Rockies, of course, paid tribute to him, a former MLB pitcher. He was just he was the voice of the Rockies for such a long time. I know he meant so much to fans, meant so much to a lot of the colleagues that we work alongside with every single day. Uh, But he will be missed. He'll be missed by a lot of people. So definitely thoughts and prayers to his family, his kids um, and all of his friends. Uh, Really sad, really sad. One of the voices of my childhood, like That's just, it, yeah. you know, like one of, you know, as someone who grew up here, just like, I just will hear his voice, you know, throughout mm-hmm. like the living in my memories throughout the living room when my dad had Rockies games on in the afternoon throughout the house. Like, Aww. so I will remember that forever seeing, so you know, so he was the voice for some really big moments in Rockies history, huge moments in Rockies history. And, um, just, you know, the soundtrack, the same way a lot of people feel that way about Goody, I'm sure for years, but, um, you know, just a soundtrack to my childhood. Yeah. No, oh, that's so sad. So sad. Um, uh, all right. What else do we need to talk about? Michael Tolia hit a grand slam in Albuquerque uh, the other day over the weekend. Um, it's his first triple A grand slam. Uh, first grand slam for Albuquerque since Aaron Shunk hit one in May. Um, and he got to do it, you know, kind of at his hometown ballpark because he is from that area. He got to, uh, you know, have a bunch of family and friends. He posted a bunch of pictures of like a ton of family, a ton of friends watching him play in Tacoma. So, so that was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. We should, you know, what we should talk about. We should talk about game time because we got a series coming up and y'all got to get some tickets because this is going to be a good one. The Angels are in town. We're going to see Mike Trout. We're going to see Shohei Otani. Um, And this is just, you can't miss these games. You absolutely cannot miss these games. And the good thing about game time is buying tickets to your favorite events could not be easier because you are going to get the best deal. You're going to get tickets right away. Um, and you can get them for all kinds of sporting events, concerts, comedy shows, theater, whatever event you're looking for. Game time probably has it for sale up there. And you're going to get killer deals on last minute tickets with their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over tickets and just start getting hyped for all the fun you're going to have. I use game time all the time. I used it on my road trip across the country. I still use it today when I'm hitting up a Rockies games on an off day for me with my friends. Um, uh, I mean, we got last Rockies game I went to, it was, I got like $2 tickets. You can get in to see Shohei for less than 20 bucks, which Ooh. like I might break my Coors Field boycott. Just to see Shohei. I think you should because um, you should because it's history. Every yeah. every almost every, every t- game. Every time he plays, it's almost history at this point. Ex- yeah, every time yeah. he he plays, he's doing something historic. You you can't miss that. So who knows what's gonna happen? Who knows? And like for less than twenty bucks, plus like rooftop tickets, you get that drink voucher. I don't know. It's just like seems like the way to go right now, it especially does. for this weekend. Ooh. It's going to be nice this weekend too. Oh my gosh. It's going to be Mid such 80s. a rooftop yeah, weekend. It's going to be such a rooftop weekend. Damn it. You know that I'm so mad that I'm not here this weekend. 
you know, I don't know what to say <laughs> other than I'm sorry. Um, thank you. Thank you for your sympathies. Thoughts and prayers for me, Susie Hunter, who has to like have a bunch of fun at her best friend's wedding this weekend and can't go to the Rockies game and watch Shohei Otani make history like probably like three times in a row. Um, uh, oh, Ethan, you can boo the Dodgers for $6. <laughs> Actually, yes. Uh, but yeah, they've got flash deals on last minute tickets. Uh, it is so easy to find tickets for every kind of event in your area. Uh, the great thing about game time, if you're looking at a set of tickets, you can see the view that you're going to have. So even if you're not totally familiar with what each section looks like, you can get an idea of you know what kind of view you're going to get. And that lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, uh, all kinds of good stuff. So yeah. Forget planning months in advance. Get those last minute tickets. Uh, get them in a matter of seconds. We love that instant gratification. Um, snag those tickets stress free with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, and use code DNVR for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. But again, create an account, redeem it with redeem code DNVR. Get twenty dollars off, uh, and download Game Time today for last minute tickets, the lowest price guaranteed. And if you're going to a game, you should probably hit up Foco for some of the best gear you're gonna find. I cannot stress enough how much I love the uh, straw hat, the straw Rockies hat from Foco that I keep stealing from our set. Oh, is it downstairs? I can't even put it on for this read. Ugh, I'm so sad. You know what? I'm going to live a long and happy life after this one hardship because uh, I know Foco is the leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise with a product line that includes apparel, accessories, toys, collectibles, novelty items, and more. The best officially licensed gear for all sports, for all fandoms, not just here in Colorado, but across the country. All different, all different sports, all different fandoms, uh, great for gifts. But listen, spring, it's baseball season. They've got the straw hats. They've got, uh, they've got Hawaiian shirts. They have polos, bags, everything you need for the game. Um, and of course, we have some really great set decorations from FOCO too, because they got the coolest stuff around. Uh, but yeah, FOCO always has our back for Colorado sports. They have yours to get the best gear around by using the link in the description of this podcast. And for all non-presale items, use promo code DNVR for 10% off. How does that sound? I think that sounds good, personally. If you were to ask me, uh, we're going to get into some baseball headlines. We got some news. We got some news happening around the baseball world. Uh, my favorite news. Some of it is, uh, the Dodgers are third in the NL West. Um, uh, this became official after the giants swept the Dodgers over the weekend, but yeah, the Dodgers are, are third. They're never third in the NL West. So Pretty crazy stuff. On the flip side, the Diamondbacks are very much at the top of the National League West. They are three and a half games ahead of the Giants, four and a half games ahead of the Dodgers. Um, do you want to guess how many games they are ahead of the Rockies? Kale, do you have a, do you have a, I would guess 16. That's it's exactly 16. <laughs> Boom. It's, it's, it's like you have the, <laughs> the outline for the show. <laughs> I did. That was actually off the top of my head, but uh, I'll take the luck. No, no. You know what? No, I, I know that you do not pay attention to what I say before the show. So, uh, But yeah, there's 16 games ahead of the Rockies who are in last place in the NL West. Um, but you know what? The Rockies aren't the only team not doing super well. Um, the Yankees. Many are saying they're bad right now. Uh, after the Rockies left uh, Boston, the Red Sox faced the Yankees. The Yankees got swept by the Red Sox. Painful, painful for that end of the rivalry. But Anthony Rizzo, after that sweep, called it a low of the season. So the Yankees are at an all-time low. And I know a lot of people hate the Yankees. So congratulations. This is your special day. Uh, you know what starts today? The MLB Draft Combine starts today, uh, which I think is super fun. Uh, it's in Phoenix this year, but yeah, some of the top um, draft prospects are going to be doing workouts, showing off their stuff. Uh, MLB Network does a great job showcasing all of this, so so that'll be fun. If you're a prospect guy or a prospect gal, this is this is fun fun viewing for you. 
And also, okay, this weekend coming up, the MLB series or the MLB London series kicks off this weekend, uh, which means Nolan Arnato is going international. Uh, but yeah, Cardinals, Cubs, they're going to face off June 24th and 25th in London. Um, I'm glad the London series is back. I'm glad this is back. I know the pandemic kind of derailed a lot of these, so it's good to have it back. We're going to address some of the comments. Um, James, thank you. I will enjoy the wedding. Um, it'll be a good time. Don't worry. I'll send pictures. Um, <laughs> I just feel so bad for them. Not really. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Oh man. It's a uh, tough times, tough times. Um, let's Let's talk about one thing real fast. Let's talk about, um, is it Shady Rays? It's Shady Rays. Uh, listen, we actually finally have some sun here in Colorado. So take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that is just as good as any expensive pair you're going to find on the market. Durable frames, clear optics, perfect for outdoor adventures, and they look good enough for outdoor brunch. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection program in eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by their lost and broken replacements. So if you lose your pair or break your pair, even on day one, who wrote this? Is that an attack on me? Uh, they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because you will have that backing long after your purchase. Um, so yeah, you can shop the entire collection. They've got brand new shades too, uh, but you can see them all in person at the Park Meadows Mall. Um, so yeah, if you want to try them on before you buy them, but if you buy them online and maybe they show up and they weren't fitting you the way you thought they were, do not worry. You can exchange or return them for free within 30 days. There's absolutely no risk when you shop. The team always has your back. So here's a deal exclusively for our listeners. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code DNVR for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. So try for yourself the shades rated five stars by more than 250,000 people. Um, uh, Nathan, Susie, I need to know who you want the Rockies to draft. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do some research and find out. Um, because yeah, we need, uh, some more, I like having things to look forward to in the future. Um, Hey, some of our, some of our 2022 draft picks are already, you know, doing really good things. Like Gabriel Hughes is already in double a. That's amazing. I love that. Speaking of double a, the double A Hartford Yard Goats. Um, obviously, I am biased uh, for them because they were my hometown team for a little bit, for a while. Uh, but they, uh, if you guys don't know the backstory, the 2016 Yard Goats, that was supposed to be their first year playing in Hartford, uh, and it did not go that way. The stadium wasn't ready in time, so that team played an entire season on the road. It was an absolutely wild time to be a baseball fan in Hartford. It was a wild time to be a player on that team, especially because most of those guys on that team are in the majors still to this day. It was the best team that Hartford never got to see. Uh, and one of the guys that was at the forefront of it was Matt Carasetti. He was the local guy in Hartford. Uh, so he got a lot of media attention for, you know, hopefully getting to play in his hometown stadium. And that never panned out, but we had a great conversation about it very recently. Uh, RG did such a great job shooting this interview too. It like, looks like a movie, but we should, we should play this conversation. Kale, are we ready? All right. So here is my conversation with Rockies reliever, Matt Carasetti. All right, Matt Carasetti. <laughs> I think of you as the original road goat because I think back to 2016, yep. the yard goats just came into existence. They had you at the hot stove luncheon, so you got to meet all of the media, and you were kind of a big deal because you were the hometown kid there playing at the brand new ballpark. Yep. And then that never really happened. When did you find out that this stadium and you guys playing at it 
was all going to unravel. So it was, we were kind of in limbo for the first couple of months of the season. They kept telling us, oh, you know, it's they have to put in the bathroom, so it's pushed back a couple of weeks. And then it just kept going and going and going. And eventually we, lost, we were just like, oh, you know, maybe it's not going to happen. And then when it officially came out that it wasn't going to happen, it was a big blow. Obviously, we were all excited to play there. And obviously, me being from Connecticut, it would have been amazing to play at home in front of friends and family and stuff and be able to live at home. I just bought a house, so it would have been perfect. But obviously, things don't always work out. Um, but we made the best of it. It, was, it ended up being a fun season. But I think once we walked through, they brought us to the stadium. A, a lot of us were like, oof, I don't think we're ever going to play here this year. So, But yeah, it was... Uh, it is what it is. It, we ended up having fun anyways. Um, it must have been a fun squad because there is so much talent oh, yeah. that was on that team that is still in the majors today. Yeah, yeah. there was, I think we, I think we were in first place for most of the year. Surprisingly, you know, based off our situation, we just, it had been a lot of guys that we had played with growing, like coming up through the system. So we all were friends. We meshed well together. We played well together. So we ended up winning a lot of ball games. So we, we, Obviously, when you're winning, it's a lot more fun, especially if you're on the road the whole year. So in that sense, it was awesome. Um, but obviously, you're still on the road the whole year. How does that weigh on you? Because travel just takes so much out of you. But to not have a home base for a whole season or the whole time that you were with the Yard Goats, because yeah. you moved up pretty quickly. But I mean, still, for a lot of that season, you guys are just in hotels. Yeah, I think the toughest part was just you know, we'd play home games at the opponent's stadium. So it was like, it was a weird vibe. And then a couple of times we would play at like a neutral site and they wouldn't let any fans in the in the stadium. So like we would play at, um, in Binghamton, we played Portland, I think, and there were no fans. And I guess it was like a precursor to COVID, the COVID year, but <laughs> it was very strange because, you know, you're used to playing it with at least some fans and then it's just dead silent the whole game. It was, it was, it was strange at times, but, uh, we got, I think it just became normal to us after a couple of months. The weirdness just became, that's kind of like normal. Stockholm Syndrome. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> You're just crazy enough to think it's normal. Um, uh, that is that is just absolutely wild to me that you guys went through all that. But you moved up pretty quickly that season. Yeah, I actually got called, I got called up to AAA on my birthday in July, which was, which was oh, wow. a cool birthday present. And then, you know, a week and a half later, I was in the big league. So it happened quick. Um, but I really, I mean, I enjoyed my time in Hartford. It was awesome. I, ha I still have not seen the stadium. I still have not been to it because I'm always playing when they're playing. And then when I get home, I'm not really in baseball mode. So I don't really go there. But uh, I'd love to see a game. My father-in-law says it's awesome. And obviously everyone else says it's amazing. Yeah. They have a beer fest in like October or November. So yeah, maybe I'll go to that. One of these days. Yeah, I'll ch I'm, I'm sure I'll find my way there eventually. Looking back. Can you believe how many of your teammates on that team are big leaguers now? It's pretty crazy, yeah. I mean, I knew we were good, but um, I think there, there must have been set seven guys just from that year that made it to the big leagues. And I think me, Valeka, Dahl, Patterson, uh, Freeland, Hoffman, or no, Hoffman wasn't there, um, Senzatella, mm -hmm. Marquez. I mean, it was like pretty much almost probably 70% of our team that year made it to the big league. So obviously we had a really good team, which helps things when you're on the road like that. Um, mm -hmm. And it was cool, everyone kind of coming up together and making it to the big leagues. It was like a, re uh, a yard goats reunion when we all got here, which was <laughs> nice. I mean, we have our own little spot in history, I guess, with not even playing there once and kind of being, I think, maybe the best team that was there, which is pretty cool. I think some of these new guys are kind of catching up to you, but I think oh, yeah. until I think yeah, still now you oh, guys yeah. are the best yard goats team. That's yeah, I mean, I hope I hope there's another team that that outdoes outdoes us because that means obviously we're doing well in the system and, and things are going right. But uh, we definitely had a special team that year. Very special, yeah. Matt. Thank you so yeah, much course, for taking no the problem. time to chat. Anytime. I know I love chatting with him because also backstory. I mean, he's the first dude in the Rockies organization I ever interviewed because I was working in Hartford. He was there at the hot stove luncheon. So he was the first player I ever got to meet uh, and then really did not see him again because we didn't see that team play in Hartford. But I had so much fun with that conversation. It felt full circle for me. I was like, oh, look at us. We all made it up here. Uh, we're going to preview the rest of this week because we have two more games in Cincinnati. Um, Tuesday night, tonight, if you're watching us live, 
5, 10 p.m. Mountain, mountain time is the start time. Noah Davis is taking the mound for the Rockies versus righty Ben Lively. Uh, and then Wednesday, our starter right now is still TBD. It could be Kyle Freeland if he's feeling better, but uh, he will be facing lefty Andrew Abbott. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, remember the Angels are in town. Um, and also, if the season ended today, the Angels, I think, would actually be in the postseason. So not, they're not even that bad right now. So good for them, I mean, but like, geez, when, when can the Rockies catch a little bit of a break? Um, we will be back, me and Patrick, Patrick and I, we will be back right here for a live post-game show after that 10.35 a.m. game in Cincinnati. So some breakfast and baseball. Uh, we will, of course, be live tweeting the whole thing at DNVR underscore Rockies. Uh, Kale, where can we find you on social media? I'm at Kale Sorbo, Kale with two L's on Twitter or at Blue Eyes with a backpack on Instagram. And he posts incredible, beautiful pictures all the time because Kale is like maybe one of the best photographers I've ever known in my entire life. Hey, thanks. That means a lot. Oh, yeah. No, I'm like, I mean it, though. Like, it, it's incredible stuff. Must follow content. Um, uh, Patrick will be holding down the fort on Friday, by the way, because I will be out of town for that wedding. Uh, tomorrow's my half birthday. Uh, you can wish me a happy half birthday at the Susie Hunter on all platforms. Uh, and Kale, you know what we say about me closing out a show? What do we say? Total train wreck. She doesn't know how to do it. But we will talk to you guys after the game here on the DNVR Sports YouTube channel.